Boom. Add. There we go. Ah! Say hi. Oh my God, you did it. We yeah. did it. Hello. Okay, let me turn this volume up. Wow, we finally did it. I was we getting a little it. nervous. Okay, I'm Turns out this sweater go. holds heat. We did the hardest part. I know. I mean, we did the thing. I'm like, I'm supposed to be a millennial and like, I can't figure any of this stuff out. It's hard. Yeah, we did it. We did it. Hi, we teams. Did. Hi. Thank Bye. you, babe. Okay. Oh, wow. This is so Hi. exciting. Hello. How the hell are you? Where are you? Uh, we are holed up in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. We are just laying low. Uh, we were both kind of traveling and out on the East Coast um, when it was like all happening. And mm -hmm. we just sort of like posted up here. Sue was actually, um, she keeps making this joke like she was Paul Revere because she was in Seattle when it like really hit. And then she came East and she was like, you guys, it's bad. It's really bad. Yeah. She was like sending yeah. the message and people were like not knowing it yet. Mm -hmm. so, anyways, and now they all know. And now, now we know. Um, well, thank you so much for coming on and I'm for being thrilled. with us here at Re-Inc. We're so excited to have you on. I speak for everyone at the company um, and saying that we love you and we're just so thankful for you and your work in the world. And we're so happy to, to have you on. So everyone, this is Glennon Doyle. She needs an introduction. Um, she's amazing. So normally when we do our resets, um, we start with just a moment of like guided meditation. I do not normally do them, but you know what? Everyone's having to step outside themselves right now. So I'm going to attempt to lead us in a little bit of grounding. I'm so brief, impressed already. A brief meditation. Okay. The sweater is a lot hard than I thought it was going to be. Okay. So everyone and everyone on IG, join us. Everyone just close their eyes. Take a big deep breath in. Let it out. Feel your feet on the ground. Hear the sounds around you. Breathe into that little bit of anxiety that I think we're all feeling right now. and just let it out, even for just 10 minutes. Okay, great job, everyone. I feel like Kristen Press is gonna be so proud of us. I hope so. She's watching, I hope she's proud. I've been trying to listen. Kristen um, and Jess, who works at our company, has been leading them in the past. And so oh, I'm yeah. trying to pick up on, on all the things that they're um, doing. So, okay, we wanted to do these because this is obviously just an unprecedented time in literally everyone's lives and in multiple generations. And we were kind of talking as a company and it's really hard right now. And I think people are trying to figure out what to do. And it's really easy, I think, to be confused and to be a little bit paralyzed in this moment. But we feel like there's just a really big need and a lot of space for hopeful ideas and still creating beauty. And we find that to be really important while coupling that with press briefings and keeping yourself educated. Um, so our whole thing with Reset the Table is to gather people. It's to spark exploration within yourself and reflection within yourself, but to do it in this really beautiful group where it's open and people are being honest and you have thoughtful conversation. And then sort of at the end, it's to like arm people back out into the world. So it's not just like a fun brunch that we want to get together. Um, we want people to think big and think differently and then act with purpose. And there's no, there's no better person to do this with than you. Um, so we are so interested in these questions and I feel like they, they just totally resonate with you all about sort of this rediscovery of yourself and your community and your purpose. And so I think first we wanna start with how and when have you felt a sense of belonging and how have you maintained that? Mm. Well, I mean, first of all, I think if we're going to talk about belonging, we have to define belonging, right? Because I think that we've had this idea of what belonging is in our culture that isn't working anymore. And I think we have two opposing things, right? We have our individuality, 
we're born with this like wild individual self, mm -hmm. but then we have this need to belong, right? That's how we survive is to belong to a group. Uh -huh. And what we've had to do usually over time to survive is to give up most of this to fit in this, right? Mm -hmm. Because what we uh, learn from when we're a kid, we we're given these labels, right? You're a girl. So girl, this is what girls do. You're, here's your sexuality. This is what a straight person does. Here's a Christian. Like this is what a Christian does. This is what a woman is. And so we start to fit ourselves in these little cages and we lose all of our wild, right? The way that, the way we keep our belonging is to not step out of line, right? Like if a girl doesn't act like we're taught a girl does, then that where, that's where all the tribal shaming comes in, right? So we end up sacrificing who we really are in order to be safe so we won't be shamed by the crew. So I think one of the beautiful things we can do, which is exactly what you're doing, which is why I'm obsessed with reading, like Abby doesn't even want to hear about it anymore. <laughs> like, you don't understand. She's like, you understand that I played soccer. Like, I know these people. Like, this is, okay. It's because we have to come up with this whole new definition of belonging, which is we can no longer require the abandonment of the individual in order to earn belonging, right? Yeah. We have to have a different model of belonging, which is like your table where, like the way I imagine it is a, a new um, idea of family, of, of, of marriage, of community, of churches, of companies where belonging means you ha you're required to bring your whole self to the table, right? And you're allowed to say the hard thing and you're allowed to step out of line. You're allowed to say the thing that, you know, you're allowed to say the thing that dif differs with everybody else. As a matter of fact, you're required to, right? Because we don't change status quo unless people bring things to the table that challenge it. Yeah. So exactly. belonging, I think, is not fitting in, right? It's totally different. It's this idea of I can bring my whole self to the table and I will be both held by the group and free to bring my individual self. Exactly. I, I love that so much. I love the idea of in order to break the status quo, you have to actually do something. We talk about this all the time at Reink, And one of the reasons that's our name re it actually means again, but better. So we talk all the time, like, we don't really actually want to burn the entire thing down because mm -hmm. there's a lot of great things that are existing in our time, but maybe they just need to be tweaked. Or maybe we need to leave some of it in the past, and then we can move forward. But I feel like we're coming out of this period where it's just like, you know, and of course, protests and resistance and all that is important. And now it's like, okay, what's the next step in that? How do we create spaces where people feel like they belong and they feel like they can bring their ideas and it's sort of that safe space while still challenging people mm -hmm. um, to do a little bit more. So we just, we, we talk about that all the time. I love that. Yeah. And you're talking about freedom, which is different than rebellion. Yeah. Right? Like, Rebellion is um, just as much of a cage as obedience is because you're still just reacting to a status yeah. quo instead of creating yeah. from a new thing, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. So, I mean, and you guys always talk about imagination. That's everything, right? You yes. reimagine, reimagine is what you're always saying at Reink. And I resonate with that so much because, especially for any group that's been marginalized. We can't consider imagination as like a little puffy thing inside that like imagination is where everything has to begin, right? Because if we only look at what's already there, we will only keep building what we've always gotten. Exactly. We're building the same structures and then trying to fit ourselves into that. And like, no matter how well we build it, we, it's just not going to work. <laughs> so it wasn't built we, for we, have to, we have to be creative in these times and we have to just like kind of dig in and just like work like it, it does take work I think um which is which is fun when you have that sort of different mindset you're not working to try to fit yourself into this little place that doesn't really fit you're actually sort of um we call it Tobin's mind palace um but we're we're trying to get in there and just say like okay what has worked for us where can we take little bits and then where do we need to move on and where do we need to create something new. Um, we wanted to ask you this, but um, what, what like fuels your work and what fuels you at work and how do you sort of keep that spark alive? And maybe it's, it's more of that kind of like personal revolution that again, 
but better. We love that sort of theme throughout your writing and, and what you do of like, okay, I just did this and now this feels amazing. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm different. And now I have to keep going. So like, what, what fuels that for you? I mean, I guess that I've just seen again and again, the power of imagination, the power of women who, I mean, this applies to men too, but whatever, I'm just speaking to women unapologetically, but like <laughs> the, the idea that when people bring their full selves, magic happens. And especially for, you know, I mean, every like, okay, there's a reason that Martin Luther King said, I have a dream, right? There's a reason that Gloria Steinem said, um, after all, dreaming is a form of planning. It's because for all of us whom the status quo was not built, mm -hmm. we have to look inside, right? We have to think of our imagination. It's like there's a, there's a scene order, like what you guys are doing. My favorite definition of, of faith or imagination is a belief in the unseen order of things, right? So there's a visible order that we can all see. We know who it was made for. We know yeah. it's not working. We know it's broken, huh. but we all have this thing inside of us. That's, that's like a hunch. Some people call it faith. It's like this idea that, that it was all supposed to be more beautiful than this. Yeah. Right. And then we, we think that's just like a pipe dream. Right. But that's the blueprint. Like yeah. that's what we're we were born to a pipe. Yeah. Right, right. Like maybe imagination isn't where we go to escape reality, but it's where we go to actually discover the truest reality that we were born to give birth to down here. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, creating these spaces that you're doing, I'm obsessed with this idea of this table, the, the table that you guys are setting, because I have seen what fires me up because I have my individual work, which, which is my art, which is where I'm freest is inside my art but it's the activism that gets me going because there's something about seeing, as you all know, a table full of women bringing their wildest ideas to the table who are not afraid to bring them because they know that everybody at the table is going to go, huh? Like there's nothing too crazy. There's nothing too wild. There's nothing that's outside of the box. Like right. when you guys, when you guys released your, your logo and your lettering, Mm -hmm. Abby was like, why are the word, the, the, the letters backwards? I was like, <laughs> I was like, they're, they're breaking out of every structure, even the way the yeah. letters are supposed to be formed. Like, mm -hmm. we're just like stepping outside of everything. So what fires me up is I think that we are here to keep creating a newer, truer, more beautiful world over and over again. And that only happens when women one at a time are expected to, required to, and permitted to bring their full selves to the table. Exactly. That's exactly it. That's, that's re, it's again, but better all over. I was just thinking as I was in the shower today, and this is something that really drives our company and is like at our core. And it's particularly pertinent in these times when so many things are uncertain. I think a lot of times we think of art and creativity, whether that's, you know, painting or words or writing or whatever it may be as like this escape from what is happening. And it's the blueprint to what can happen. And like, that's what I feel like, you know, there's so much happening right now and there's gonna just be some practical shit that like we have to get done. And that's, <laughs> but it's also like, we have to cultivate that within ourselves because we might be getting like a once in a generation opportunity to really reimagine things in so many different ways. And so like really sort of leaning into that idea that art and creativity and space for people is the blueprint for, because I think about all the time, like the system that we live in, it was just created by someone. It's not like it's, you know, the natural order of the world. Like if we're not reversing the the flow of rivers. It's just something that was created. And so it can also just be created a different way by different people and just giving oh, okay. people that permission to say that and to feel that and also encouraging people to understand the roadmap is in creativity and, and allowing people to go there, I think is so important. And you get to do it with everything, like everything. with companies, with governments, yeah. with families, with, with, I mean, all of it, the norms, every norm was made by somebody. We get to make our own norms, right? We get to every single life, every single relationship, every single company should be as unique as the person who's creating it, oh. right? And there's a reason that the structures we have, you said they were built by somebody. Yeah, we know who they were built by and yeah. they were built to serve a certain 
So, so you're right. We're just redoing all of it to work for more of us, for more of us, for more of us, for more of us. And you all are doing that everywhere. You're doing it on the field. You're doing it in your companies. It's just, I'm so freaking inspired by you guys. Ah, oh, likewise, likewise. Okay, which brings us, I see it in the background, your new book. You were in the middle of a book tour. Did you start it yet before this? Screen? I had one day of book tour. One day of book tour. Okay, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, this is so crazy. So Megan. you are now having to reimagine your book tour and uh, reimagine what community looks like in bringing this amazing book to us. So just tell us a little bit about it. Um, how's it going? How are you reimagining your book tour? And um, how do we get this book into like literally everything? I mean, yes, the book is amazing. You should all buy it. But like, besides that, here's the thing about all the things we plan. Okay, we plan the book tour, we plan, we plan, we plan, we plan, and we have to plan, right? That's part of being a leader. But the thing is, nothing ever ever goes the way we think it will go ever not one time not in the history of the world okay yeah. so we're not like laying railroad tracks okay we're like riding a wave yeah and there is no solid ground nothing will go as the plan as you plan it in your relationships in your count in your book tour in your whatever mm -hmm. but what i figured out I was laying in my hotel room and we had to decide whether to call the tour or not. And it was early. It was like, you know, 14 days ago or something. Yeah. I don't know when people weren't sure about this yet. And I remember being in my room and thinking, how can I cancel this? Like everyone's been working on this for a year. This book untamed is the most beautiful thing that I've ever made in my creative career. And then I caught myself and I was like, no, 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 no. Untamed is not the most beautiful thing I've made in my career. My community is the most beautiful thing I've made in my career, right? These people who at this point may or may not be showing up and I may be putting them at risk and I may, like yeah. it all becomes so clear when you remember that we always love our people that we serve with and our people that we serve more than whatever product we're serving. Like if we can keep that, if we can keep love and respect and community above anything else, we will always make the right decisions. And the right decisions might not be like monetarily beneficial in the short term. Yeah. I will sure as hell tell you that. <laughs> yep, definitely. <laughs> we, hear, we hear you on that. <laughs> do, you, do you hear me that? Hear it's me just like, you know, who it is what it is. Um, bumps with, with sticking with her integrity. Yeah. But in the end, it always works out because in the end, trust and respect are the only real currency. Mm -hmm. Right? Love. So here we are reimagining our book tour reimagining and it'll be fine it'll all be fine it's yeah i mean it'll, it'll be what it's going to be we we have to roll with these times this is totally unprecedented and i think that that's right we we always just tried like okay what is in here what do we need to do yes you can you know try to forecast and look long term but also what's in the immediate how can we go with our gut to make these decisions and just honestly just do the best that we can i think if you're forthright with that and you are leading with, with that same heart that wrote the book, that put those words on that page, that you know, painted whatever, that is doing whatever you're doing, then like that is sort of your, your guiding light. Um, one last question to finish it off. Um, I've written it down, otherwise I won't forget. Um, is there one thing that you can tell people to remember when they are in the process of trying to reimagine themselves or they they know that something is off or there's more, you talk about this in your book, um, what would you tell people who are like at the beginning of that little revolution within themselves? Well, first of all, I would say to honor it and not numb it and not deny it. Um, I think that women especially are shamed out of our discontent you know, um, discontent can feel like a lot of things in the beginning. It can feel like anger. Mm -hmm. um, every marginalized group with our, it's very important for power structures to shame us out of our anger, right? To make us think when we're a little bit angry or discontent that there's something wrong with us mm -hmm. instead of that there's just something wrong, right? Right, that we can be a part of changing. And the reason why that we are all shamed out of our anger is because angry people tend to demand change, right? Like every every structure that was ever changed was because a bunch of people got pissed off. So 
my first advice would be don't talk yourself out of your discontent right that little nagging there that questioning that anger might be your signal that that it's time for something new yeah it's definitely right? a signal it's a gift and yeah. when you lean into it the other thing that i always say to do is like forget right and wrong forget should forget supposed to all of those those are those are culturally created concepts to keep us in line forget all of those words don't ask yourself what you should do or what you're supposed to do or what's right and wrong ask yourself what is true and beautiful Mm -hmm. What's the truest, most beautiful family I can imagine? What's the truest company I can imagine? What's the truest nation I can imagine? Because good and should activates all of your conditioning, mm -hmm. right? But true and beautiful does something else. It like reaches inside of you and you start to tell a story. It's here, not here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then write it down because for whatever reason, the true and beautiful, it only wants to come to life like one dimension at a time. Right? It's like an architect, like you can't go from like this dream of a building to like start building it. Like it needs right. one dimension at a time. So give yourself permission to admit you have discontent. Ask yourself, what's the truest, most beautiful, write it down, put it away. Don't, don't, don't tell yourself you have to do anything about it yet. Just let the dream sit there for a little while. And eventually after you know it exists, you get enough courage to take the first step to make it real. Oh, I love it. What is true and beautiful? Trust your gut, trust your heart always. This will like follow and it'll mm. like figure it out at the end. But it's like, you know what? This is like, gotta be the follower. It'll keep up if it can. If not, we're still doing the things. Absolutely. That's where all our junk lives, our conditioning, yeah. our fear. Like we gotta get out of here and get back here. That's what you guys do. Uh, well, thank you so much. This was, I just love it. I wish that we could talk for 10 hours. Me um, too. I have to do an extended one. We love you so much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for just being wonderful in the world. If ever there's anything we at Reink um, can do with you or for you, don't hesitate. Um, everybody, stay inside. Stay away from each other. Um, if you need help, reach out um, in the right ways. But we have got to flatten this curve, frankly. Amen. So stay in. Uh, tap into that creativity um, and find the little beautiful things in this uncertain world. Perfect. Bye, you guys. I love you.